Thronebreaker event quest, that is, event quest, rewards breakdown, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hope you're doing well. So, as a lot of you know, uh, in-game we've just had the Thronebreaker difficulty launch. I'm um, just about to kind of prepare to, like, do a guide for it and have a look at a few things, like test it out and whatnot, uh, because it's new difficulty, so I want to see, like, the crack of it. Uh, and especially because, like, um, we've got... It's exa exactly the same as Cavalier difficulty. Difficulty scale is, like, well, seven-star... Champions are kind of the champions you face off against, which you can see uh, right here. Uh, even on the uh, easy path on it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven stars on, on this particular one. Uh, but yeah, for the for this particular video, I wanted to compare off the rewards. Rega regardless of looking at the difficulty side of things, that will come into bonus content contention, I think, at a later date. But I definitely want to go over um, these things. With Kabam, have also changed the color scheming for Cavalier difficulty. It's not like a purpley pink anymore. It is a um, it's a yellow. And Thronebreaker is now a, uh, well, a orange, which odd. So that they've done that. Cavalier's always been that kind of colour for a long time. And has that changed anything when it comes to the the buttons? If I can click my, no, I can't. I need to go to the main screen to click my uh, progression in game. Yeah. So it's, I mean, yeah, that's, it, it's odd. It's kind of like confusing. It's throwing me a little bit here because then I always thought that like Thronebreaker was meant to be the kind of like the bluish colour with the, you know the Purple, whatever, but whatever, and the green obviously being um, or green and kind of purplish, whatever, as being uh, your um, paragon. Any case, to the point, Richard. Okay, I will do. So I wanted to kind of like deep dive the rewards and have a look like whether or not they're any good. Look, any new difficulty with any new rewards is still good. By making it Thronebreaker, Kabam have this luxury of kind of being able to not overly bump it up. Uh, as considerably as you might think. So you might be kind of looking and going, oh, this means that Kabam can add in Thronebreaker difficulty having loads of decent rewards, all up with the current meta. No, no, they don't. Uh, it usually means that it's a bridging gap between those that are Cavalier and Paragon. So they'll go, right, we'll slap back in, slap bang in the middle. This is why um, you, you've seen a slight bump up in the reward standard for, uh, for, for kind of... Um, June, I think it was June of last year, June 2022, we had a buff to uh, Cavalier uh, rewards. And also there is a, a buff up to the rewards for, um, you know, uh, lower difficulties. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs and specifics of why, I think it's, is it Contender has got a, well, I don't know if Contender and Proven and Upwards and that Conqueror have received a buff. I'm not going to go into that because I, I can't remember and it's not really the, the topic of this video, but Kabam did allude to that particular thing. In any case, recently we've seen a buff in the reward standards and the metas, so let's have a look. Let's compare off against what Cavalier we know and also what Thronebreaker is and go, right, well, what's changed? What has been the upgrade and what are people's thoughts around this? So first of all, let's go over the comparison of rewards and then we'll have a look at feedback from the player base on this. So first of all, there's Thronebreaker difficulty, there's 19,000 six star shards. I pretty much, my kind of totting up of the numbers is correct. Kabam haven't posted it anywhere, so that creates a bit of a problem, but I'm pretty certain on the numbers. So there's been an upgrade between difficulties of 9,000 six star shards. I think too bad, it's an upgrade. Five star shards, again, a bit of a problematic thing for those that are Paragon looking at this and going, why five star shards? But this is, this is why it's throwing breaker difficulty. This isn't, I'm not going to say it is and it isn't built for those that are throwing breaker because this is like apparently Cavalier, but well, I don't know. Like Kabam didn't say it's Cavalier, but a little bit more difficult. And I'm yet to try it out. I'm going to do a review of it uh, tomorrow once I've kind of had a bit of time to play about with it and kind of figure out, okay, well, who is it? Who is this really geared for? How's five stars on this? You know, it's, it's critical things like that. They're going to take a bit of time just to kind of like give a good assessment. But in any case, uh, moving on. Five star shards are in it, whether or not people like it or not. As I said, it is built for Thronebreaker or what Thronebreaker will technically need uh, before Paragon. In any case, tier 5 CC, there's uh, one fully formed and 50% selector in Thronebreaker, which is great. That kind of works out as a 1.4 something extra tier 5 CC. Tier 2 Alpha Fragments, okay. Uh, we have got four more than Cavalier Difficulty. So the upgrade, what I'm referring to on the right hand side of here, the upgrade is. What is buffed from uh, what is more than the Cavalier difficulty to kind of give you the idea of the difference? What's actually been improved between difficulties? 
And then what we else we've got? We've got I've kind of I've not included the selectors and tier four CCs because I kind of feel like it's it's not really well it's not really too important. It is and it isn't right. It's actually less, but you know you get to select. Go figure. Signature stones, six star wise. There's no five star ones in the in the Thronebreaker one. Odd, but uh, uh, just odd. But there's five star shards that there's yeah. In any case. Um, odd. Six star signature stone crystals and signature stones does some generic, which is great because you get choice. But there's technically ten more signatures per for that difficulty. The ISO remains the same. That's a weird thing. That's a weird thing I found. Exactly the same on the ISO. But you kind of think th throwing breaker players, the same problem Paragon players have. It's like acquisition of ISO. So wouldn't you want to have inflated that a lot more? Very, very weird, but you know, come on, do be weird. Gold wise, there's a nice amount of improvement with it from 960k with Cavalier difficulty up to 3.3 mil. So that's a buff up of uh, 2.34 mil. If I've got the sums right, I think, I think I've got the sums right with that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's good. That's good. That's good news. But then, as a lot of you know, um, there's been tier 6 basic and tier 3 alpha fragments that were part of the Thronebreaker objective. The Thronebreaker objective, which would kind of like sit and live in here, uh, would allow you to, yeah, go and um, go and get something that was a, a nice chunk of tier 3 alpha and tier 6 basic. Instead, it is thrusted into the difficulty. Take with that as you as you will, and, and as you kind of think. Um, I would say my only kind of like reservation about uh, a new difficulty is what you go out to grind. My particular problem is it's going to be burnout, I think. The problem that I've got being non-spending player is I always try to do a good chunk of the event quest because of units. And this becomes a problem because you, you kind of feel like, oh, great. So there's another whole load of event that I've got to do. And it... it a lot of time with Cavalier difficulty, and the thing is, I'm speculating at the moment because I haven't done it just yet, but I will kind of check it out. Is I have this very good time frame in that it takes me if I'm if things are going good at pace, it will take 15 minutes to go and do one path to a boss and and done right. And time's very important. And if you've got to do that seven times in the latter points of the difficulty, and I say I'm not spending my units on that on that energy and I have to wait for auto refills of it, that becomes a problem. And it can be more of a problem as well if you're using your energy for things like Battlegrounds for a month. So it's like, I don't want to feel like I'm overly grinding out an MCOC. I still will kind of like take a rain check and go, do you know what? I'm, I'm farming this, this game too much. I'm grinding a bit too much. Let's kind of say, right, well, I'm going to have to say no to something. Like one month, don't do incursions. Another month, don't do Battlegrounds. Or another season, don't do Battlegrounds. But then that's a problem because then that's current meta. It's a tough one, isn't it? Because you don't want to burn out from the game. At the same time, I think that um, Kabam need to be very wary about when they're putting a new content in, like this, or new difficulties and things like that, um, as to like where players are with how much they are grinding out and also making sure that it's rewarding. Like, I guess the difference is like if there was something that was overly rewarding and I was like, I didn't need to have to do other things in game. But Kabam don't care. Like They wouldn't, they wouldn't care about like, they don't care about, um you know, Richard Manning in um, in England that has to has to do some extra unit grinding in lower difficulties because he's non spending a Marvel contest champions. They don't care about that, right? This is this is about like again just really thinking about what is important for players, their time investment because that's the thing. Time is very important, and I always I already think at the moment with like things like battlegrounds, arena, all these other quests. It's really real. It becomes a lot, especially if there's uh, just say for whatever for hell's sake, Kabam decide to add in at some point this year a or next year a Paragon difficulty. So if we've got Paragon, we've got Thronebreaker, we've got Cavalier difficulty. What gives then between all these others that I have to kind of like say right? I guess I don't have the time to or do that or do that. I've got to do that. <sighs> It's a lot. So it's important to keep these things well rewarded. So your time investment is giving, is kind of like, is worth it in these different areas for what's rewarded. I think that's the point I wanted to get to. I skipped around a bit. But uh, 
yeah, um, that's really it. There's a lot of thoughts on the forums about this uh, particular subject, whether or not people are, they like it. Some people like it, some people don't. There's uh, criticisms here, criticisms there uh, on this. Um, yeah, um, pff, lots of things, lots of things um, on offer, lots of breakdowns. I guess the big thing now is like, what's the future? We got seven star shards, we got rank five, six star materials. So where's, uh, you know, tier six class catalysts? I am surprised that we're not going towards that, but I think that's going to be with the next difficulty. But again, it does go back to my point about the extent of time investment in this game, which is kind of dragging. In any case, those reward situations and metas always need to be looked at. So I really wish Kabam would uh, would look more about more on this and also take in player consideration when it comes to, um, you know, as I said, time investment and that quality of life based on not having to do every single piece of kind of content that Kabam put out. And the Kabam will say, well, you can do what you can do what you choose to do. You don't have to do everything. Yeah, but it's not the point because you put chase rewards for those that are non-spending in places where you end up having to grind excessively. But in any case, it is what it is. What's your thoughts in the comment section down below? Make sure to check out some other content located on screen right now. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.